what is a smart meter and how can we protect ourselves from it? That's one of those things that people panic about. So let's talk a little bit about that. You have a, a garage. Your meter, your, your power is on the side of your garage. And you have two car garage between you and the kitchen in your, your home. And then you have your living room and you have three bedrooms. Is that a problem? Is a smart meter that's transmitting roughly in the cell phone range, periodically pinging every 15 minutes? Is that a danger to you and your family? Absolutely not. Why? Distance. Because of the fact that it's far away like that, it pre presents no danger whatsoever to your family because it's transmitting, yes, but it's not close enough to impl uh, influence your family. If it was on your wall outside your bedroom and your, your head was right on the wall, move your bed because now it's serious. Now you're near a pinging uh, transmitter that can influence all night your sleep. So it really depends on where it is and how much of a danger it is based on where it is in your house. Do cell phone companies put a warning label on cell phones? When I spoke about Berkeley before, they don't. They've never been obligated to. When Berkeley brought to court the, the need to label, like they do cigarettes, they found they lost in court. CTI lost in court. And they actually like the Italy thing, they, they went three times. The first and appeal, second and another appeal. They lost. And so that is, again, one of those instances where there's a groundswell of, uh, of normal users of these products saying, no, we, we, we got to put a stand here. And at the very least, we got to tell people who use the cell phone that there may be risk. That's all they wanted to do. And fortunately, they were able to do that. That has not occurred beyond that, but I sort of look at it as the first example of many that have to come. Is it accurate that insurance companies have refused to cover mobile operators for years now because of the risk being so high? And can you explain that in more detail? Yeah, I absolutely can. The reality of it is you can't get insurance. They self-insure, have done it for 50 years around liability. Um, their services potentially expose them to liability. Insurance companies, they look at statistics. Uh, they're pretty exacting in their science in support of um, being a carrier for those services. They've concluded that they're more at risk than they like to be because there's a preponderance of evidence. So if you run a service provider uh, company, you can't get insurance. What are the health concerns from driving an electric car? Does the battery in the electric car expose you to high EMFs? Electric cars in general are sort of fairly safe, which is counterintuitive, right? You, you think that there's all these electronic components, all of them generate emissions, and that's endangering the driver and the passengers more so than typical. But turns out the energy emitted is because of the windings in the wheel well. Those are fairly distant from where the, you sit. If you have a, a battery and it's right under where you sit, there's no doubt we know that there is a DC power emission because there's a current flow. When those batteries are not in the passenger space, I've got to tell you, it's fairly safe. So you got to look for how it's constructed, but by and large in general, they're not too bad. No more than a regular car. So you can make that choice to move there fairly safely. What impact does wireless radiation and 5G have on animals, insects in the environment. Do I need to care about this? 
Does it have an impact on me in that way? There's no doubt about it. You should be concerned. There was a study several years ago where they put cell phone transmitters in beehives. They never return. So we know that the bees at 4G and low, lower were influenced in some way. The mechanics may be in dispute, but certainly the navigational and because they tend to rely on senses more so than humans, uh, those things were disrupted and it clearly had an impact. I have an image that I use often where there was a cell tower, uh, a 5G cell tower, a small cell, and on the bottom were dead bees. It turns out when you go up to 20 gigahertz, which this tower was, the bee itself absorbs five times more of the signal than a 4G. So this is anecdotal. We don't have enough evidence to know the long-term impact, but certainly we do have some instances we can point to where the, the natural environment, the animals within, are being impacted. And you may have heard that there are birds, they claim, in England that died as a result of a trial that was going on. That may be true. It's hard to point to that as clear evidence. It's anecdotal at best, but it's a data point. Keep your eyes open. It may be more. Can you sum up everything we've talked about in 15 seconds? Yes. You own your environment. Your kids don't listen to you. Your parents don't listen to you. Your grandchildren don't listen to you. But guess what? You're the architect of your own destiny. You can decide the environment you live in. You can bring safety if you know the rules. And you own the responsibility to make those choices. No one else. So we know our environment evolves. We always have new toxins in the environment that impact the human being. But if you know where they are, you help improve your safety by making sure you architect that plan for safety. What's the one thing I must do today? Make sure your kids are safe. Because as I mentioned very early on, I'm an old guy, you're a medium old guy. It's the kids we worry about. And so if you have a sense of urgency, it should be around your kids. We are exposing our children at the various earliest of ages using these technologies that from most of the evidence could be fairly serious in long term to their health. So really pay attention. Why did you feel it was important for you to come here and speak at the Real Truth About Health conference? One of the, and such an important value um, that this conference provides is a sort of a status report on health. And to be able to participate and educate so you can make informed decisions are very, very important. And uh, I appreciated the opportunity to come here to educate the stuff you should know and how it influences you and your family. And this conference is designed to bring the latest and best understanding of the environment we live in today. So you do wonderful work. How can people best reach you and learn more about your work? The way they can be reached is defendashield.com is the website we have. And we have a lot of time spent on education. We have a learning section. We keep current. I have a, 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 a description within that that is pages upon pages of what 5G is about. You want to learn a little bit more about 5G? You go to our, our learning section and you'll learn. If you want to know what's going on currently, um, we post almost every day the latest in, in the research and study work so you can learn more from that uh, by paying attention to our, 
uh, our Facebook postings and, and our blog postings. And we try to keep as current as possible. So if you want to get in contact with us, DefendersShield.com.